name? Friends and neighbors? Or shall I say this afternoon? Welcome back to The Political Process. I'm your host, longtime listener. Be sure to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and comment below. Um, so we left off last time at the beginning of 2020. We just were elected to the Pittsburgh City Council. And so now it's time to actually start doing some stuff in job. So you can see here there are some city laws that are taking effect this year. So there will be a new drug court uh, that gets established and getting some funding through uh, an appropriations process, which basically means like they got to set a budget for it. Uh, there is now going to be a student welfare committee. And there will also be a citywide minimum wage increase from seven twenty-five to ten bucks, which is kind of interesting. Uh, state laws taking effect this year. There's a gas tax that is going to be lowered. Emissions taxes are now going to be established um, for power plants, which is interesting. The statewide minimum wage is going from 725 to 8, even though you can see here minimum wage across the country is going to go up to 10. So this is going to be sort of moot at that point. Um, so that's that. Now, if we go into like here, challenges, these are the things that we kind of made as far as campaign promises. So we definitely want to try and get these done so that people will trust us. Some of these might happen naturally without me having to do anything. Like as soon as I advance one week, some of these might already be done, which is awesome. Um, but I could come in here and see like you have to kind of select um, these things to see legislation news. But where we want to go is to the legislation tab. And remember, we're talking about the city here. Income just went up because of the citywide income, uh, minimum wage hike, which might take care of that um, promise of per capita income right off the bat. So that's cool, but we might need to do some things to try and improve the road quality, which the only way I can do that is when it comes time to set the budget, I have to push for more money there so that our road quality goes up. Crime hopefully just comes down on its own as well. So let's do this. Let's go ahead and advance turn. Look at that. Boom. Our campaign promises are already taken care of because basically things, and this happens in real life, politicians step into office and all of a sudden things look like they're getting a lot better, but it's probably because of things that were already done. The wheels are already in motion and like they've already laid the groundwork now the person that's in office is basically just coasting on the work that the other people did before they even got there. So, boom, this is awesome that all of those are done without me having to do anything. Now, you can see here that the constituents want us to get a reduction of jail sentences for drug crimes. So we need to write legisl legislation that would do that and then get it actually past like it's not just um you know you get you know points for writing the legislation but the big task that you'll get more political points for uh is to actually get it passed so let's go ahead and do like try this just so we can kind of see this process in in action so if i go into legislation create legislation and hit crime remember it said Let's go back and just double check. Where was it? Uh, challenges. Reduce jail sentences for drug crimes. So I go to legislation, crime, prison sentence for public order crimes. Boom. Right? Wait. Prison sentence for drug crimes. Duh. Okay. Currently, it is 1.25 years. What we want to do is reduce it. So let's see if we can get it down to one year. What that will do is save our jails a bunch of money by getting those people out of there earlier. Now, 
ideally those people would be rehabilitated during that time or whatever to where they don't end up back in prison. Um, but let's just give this a whirl. So now we wrote the legislation. It's on its way to becoming law. And now it's basically going to come up for consideration because I wrote this, the bill to have the city council review this and see if we should do this. And again, this is just at the city level. So it's kind of interesting because I don't know that this is necessarily something that you would pass on a city level. Um, but we'll see. <clears throat> now, I don't think I really need to be keeping a whole lot of a close eye on much, except for in this tab, it is going to tell me if a new challenge pops up. So we'll need to kind of keep an eye on that. Um, you can see here, our team is still doing some fundraising and bringing in a little bit of cash. And they're actually bringing in cash for the Democratic Party, um, which probably doesn't benefit me all that much, realistically. But I want to kind of get in the habit of this so that when the time comes to where this number is more impactful, we're also getting political points and it gains us influence within the party. So we're at least kind of trying to put on a face that we are trying to help the party overall. Now, you can see here, committee hearing, city council is going to talk about my bill that I wrote. And I am the sponsor. This is basically explaining what it is. So there will be other things like this that are written by other sponsors and that will be the first thing that you're going to see here. Now, basically, here's the proposal. Decrease the prison sentence from 1.25 years to one year. And it also kind of explains the logic behind it. Okay. So, boom, continue. And now here we go. Tilda Kirby, corrections officer, uh, or chief corrections officer, says this will decrease our expenditure by approximately $8,500 per prisoner over the course of their prison sentence. That's all she's got to say. Logan Baines, a committee member, says criminalizing a, a public health issue such as drug addiction is wrong, and so he supports this and, and suggests that his colleagues also support it. Now... <clears throat> Here's Republican Jeremiah Moore. He says that this in, this decreases the prison length by too much, and he wants Republicans to oppose it. That's all fine and dandy, because if those five oppose it and the ten Democrats are in support of it, it's going to pass. goes to the mayor, who will also support it, because he's also Democrat. So, continue... And we are going to say that we support this legislation. Boom. And look at that. We even got a few Republicans to support it. So it gets through with 80% support. That's awesome. And now it goes to... Um, oh, look at that. My influence... My reputation influenced the vote of one politician. Okay. Interesting. Um, I have very little political influence, but whatevs. Here we go. Your legislation has been signed into law by the mayor. So now if we go to our challenges tab, we get points for that, which is cool, 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 cool. And now they want us to reduce city property taxes. Now, the reality is that for that to work, like if I go in here and say create legislation, if I just go here and reduce property taxes, that reduces our city's tax revenue. We got to be able to find a way to get that money back, though, right? So what I would realistically do in this scenario is go in and do a tax reform bill. And this gives us the ability to change a lot of different tax selections, okay? So what we could do would be reduce the property tax and then institute a tax on like the highest tax bracket in the city. Um, but I'm not even sure that we really want to do that. Um, like it's a city level. I'm just not real crazy about this. I can come in and say like, let's just reduce it a little bit guys. 
I don't know what this does in terms of our budget overall, but if I just come in here and say for the city tax or for the property tax, let's go from 1.76 to 1 1.7. <coughs> can we can we afford that? We're going to try it. It might not be the best idea, frankly, because the, the Democrats might not support it. Um, so he's saying that this is a decrease of 4% uh, per taxpayer. And it's a reduction of 36 or almost $37 million in tax revenue for the city. Yeah, and see, like old Logan here is going to oppose it. Republicans obviously support it. I'm going to say we support it and we lost. A couple of Democrats voted for it, but most of them did not. We actually got one Republican that voted against it. So bottom line, you can't really do this without getting that money back somewhere. So now that we've tried that, let's just burn through a few weeks here. Presidential primary coverage. Um, that's going to be in certain states and I don't really care that like, this is one of the, this is probably like the Iowa primary. Yeah. Iowa usually goes first. So if we just go like this and click on Iowa, they are doing the presidential primary. So it looks like old Genevieve Garland is the current president and she's running unopposed in the Republican primary. So there's a bunch of Democrats running here, and Ezekiel Ironside looks like a runaway winner um, in that party. So that's that. At least in Iowa, old Zeke dominated. So what we're going to do now is we want to keep an eye on these challenges. See, like I got a political point for at least writing a legislation that would reduce property taxes. Realistically, we're not going to be able to get this done without instituting a income tax in the city, and I'm not going to do that. Just doesn't make sense. If we get to the state level, maybe we work on the budget a little bit to try and finagle that to get it to work. But right now, it I just don't think it makes sense. Um, now, what I also want to show you is if we go in here, our personal savings are slowly going up and you can see that our campaign finance funds at 1491 they're actually going up because right now we are not spending any money on a campaign but we're only bringing in you know about two thousand bucks a week you know but two to three thousand so it's not going to be a fortune but I mean, you're talking a hundred grand over the course of the year, and that will help pay for my staff and marketing campaign when it comes time to run for mayor, which we'll probably do before long. So buckle up, baby. All right. We could probably burn through a bunch of weeks here because I don't really think that there's a whole lot left for me to try and get done in this position. City council is really not that exciting of a role because there's not a whole lot that you can realistically do we got a new challenge here they want us to reduce jail sentences again for drug crimes we're not going to do that like and this will get annoying like i go in there and i dismiss that like we already got that done and it was this calendar year like maybe we visit that next year but we're not going to do it again right now so um Let's go see more presidential primaries. Oh, oh, we forgot to watch. Yeah, here we go. It's election night. So this is the um, this is the big election here for, well, what are we looking at here? I, I don't care about Iowa. We want to look at Pennsylvania. What's going on here? So in the Senate, there are no elections. And this is stuff that we could have seen at the, um, you know, the beginning of the year. So there are some seats up for grabs in the House it, at the federal level. Uh, the state Senate has elections going on. State House has elections going on. So let's let's actually just skip to the end and see who all won. So, 
and we want to look in races. Oh, these are just the primaries. That's right. So it really doesn't matter that much yet. Um, we want to see election night when it comes down to uh, what, 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 what are we looking at? Oh, this is the presidential primary. And it's just in Indiana. So it looks like the Democratic race is down to two. A bunch of people dropped out. So Cynthia Calderon is hanging on for dear life, but it still looks like Zeke is going to be the clear favorite. Uh, so anyway, um, there's probably, like I said, in this city council seat, there's not a whole lot that we can really accomplish that's noteworthy at this point. So we're not going to try and pass legislation that like doesn't make sense realistically. Like We're not going to put a city income tax in place in Pittsburgh. That's just crazy. Uh, and things like that. So... A new challenge has appeared in your challenge tab. And again, they want us to reduce property taxes. We've already tried to do that, and it didn't work. So I'm going to just leave this challenge in here because otherwise it'll probably keep popping up. So we'll just leave it in there, and then it's not a big deal. What you'll also notice is that some of these give you... Okay, so challenge expires week 22 two years from now. So we might be able to pull this off over the course of two years if we can try and finagle the budget to where we get more revenue in other places that could allow us to do a property tax reduction, but it's not going to be easy. So uh, keep advancing, advance, advance. City Council hearing regarding the minimum wage. So we'll take a look at that in a second. Is there anything else that I should be keeping an eye on? I don't think so. Oh, you can select a protege. Um, and basically, you can see here. They will be guided by their mentor, which will be me. They will copy all of my policies and run for an election in whichever district I decide. So, um, and then it says here, if they do not have a position when you dismiss them, they will not run for any election and they will disappear from the political world. So basically what I can do is I can come in here, select a protege for city council, and we'll say Juan Pablo Torres, just select him. Now, he's a middle school teacher uh, and has been for 16 years. So now he's basically, at some point, he will try to run for city council. Um, and I should be able to, I thought I could pick a district, but maybe not. It's like, um, anyway, I think it'll come down to the point where, like, I can say next election and pick if I want him to run. And I would do that at the beginning of the year, weeks one through five, is when they have to decide if they're going to run or not. So anyway, now we have a, uh, a council hearing on a city minimum wage, and Republicans want to lower it $2 lower than the national minimum wage. So we're probably going to go ahead and oppose this one. Um, so I don't think this is even going to get close. Minimum wage is bad for small business owners. I, there's a lot of economists that will talk about minimum wage uh, and like what is an effective and, you know, like the sweet spot for minimum wage. It's a complex situation. Uh, so anyway, so now we need to, oh, there's an amendment. Wait, what? Oh, do I want to create an amendment for this legislation? So what I could do is come in and say, like, I don't think $8 is right, but why don't we do 9 Or eight's wrong. I want it to be 11 The reality is I want to leave this where it is because it's not going to pass, especially if it is where it is. So I'm going to say no. And now when I vote, I will vote against that legislation. So oppose and... 
he didn't even get all of his Republican colleagues on board. Like that one we knew was not going to pass. Um, but hey, at least something happened that kind of made us think for a second. So reduced property taxes and reduced drug crime sentences. Like we're not going to do those guys. It's just not going to happen. I think one year for a drug crime is probably fair, but like, honestly, I don't, I don't know how specific that is. So anyway, all right, keep on burning along here. Okay. So we've got the presidential debate now in week 39 because the election is coming up. Let's just watch one because they're going to talk about their different, you know, policies. Cynthia Calderon is still campaigning did she beat zeke dang so genevieve uh is you know the incumbent and apparently zeke must have just collapsed at the end although we only looked at two states so anyway um next turn okay so basically here there's a budget legislation so I have the opportunity to create uh, or to adjust the proposed budget. So Logan Barnes puts together the city budget, and I want to take a look here and see if we can change it. And here's why. Um, if I come in here and say, like, we want to put more money into city maintenance – uh, or uh, road maintenance, for example. So, like, I can go like this. It's at 54.9. I don't know why it, like, drastically changes whenever you touch it. Let's say, like, I make it 55.5 and then drop this from 113.9 to, like, 112 or something. So, we're basically taking money away from road construction and putting it into road maintenance. Makes sense? So you could do something like that. You could adjust the police budget. Um, and some of this would be like, we want this number to be in the positive. Like right now, we have an extra $2.7 to spend. <clears throat> so what I want to do, where was... So this is our spending budget, though. And the reality is, if we can lower this to get more and more of a surplus, it might make it easier to pass um, the uh, property tax reduction concept. But, like, where do we want to take money away from? Let's go... Uh, I don't think we need... Look at last year's budget. They dropped that down pretty significantly anyway. So I think, like, but here, agency budget request is $73 million, and we're giving them more than that. Like, we're going to drop that down a mil or so. Uh, special ops. Like, we don't need a SWAT team that bad. And we're already giving them way more than they're asking for. So let's drop that down a little bit as well. We're going to drop – the police are not going to like me for this, but um, fire department is asking for a lot more than what they're getting. I'm not going to increase it because that's what the – all right. So anyway, fire and explosive ordinance. That's five – almost six million. We shouldn't need that much for jails because of our – other policies that we put into place and they are get they're already getting more than they got last year let's drop this down to about 70 mil that's probably close to where we need this in general uh yeah so I think that's about where we want to leave all of this stuff. I mean, again, there's a lot of other stuff that we can do here. But that gives us $7 bucks to work with. Let's do that. 
And now they're going to vote on my amendments, and I'm going to support it. And this, these are adjustments to, I guess, a lot of the different. So like here, funding to the city and county jail system. So the jail funding is what we're voting on here. And I'm going to support this because these are all the things that I just said. And look how bad <laughs> they, these things are being viewed. Support. Oh, gosh. Support. We're not getting very. Oh, we got close on that one. Dang, that would have been nice. Okay, so that that's it for the budget process. None of them went through, which stinks, because we were kind of hoping that we would be able to cut back on expenses to, to then justify cutting back on revenue from taxes by reducing uh, the city property tax. So that's not going to happen, unfortunately. We do want to watch the presidential election. Um, it's probably pretty likely that the incumbent will win, I would imagine. Yes, we want to watch election night coverage. So, um, let's just skip to the end. Yeah, it wasn't even close. So, Genevieve Garland gets 305 electoral votes and... Almost 58% of the popular vote. I don't think there were any. Um, yeah, so if we look at the Pennsylvania House, um, we've got, oh, look at the, the U.S. House overall. Democrats lost 21 seats. So this is not good for our career long term. Because we want there to be a heavier mix of Democrats in office so that we can actually get stuff done. This is not good. Um, there was no governor race in Pennsylvania. We, you know, Democrats lost seats there. We lost seats at the state level to where, look at this. The Pennsylvania state is now 31 Republicans versus 19 Democrats. So even if I get elected to the state Senate, we're not going to be able to get anything done. State House is still like everything is trending towards Republicans getting their way right now. And this is bad. We need that trend to reverse so that by the time we get into an office where we're doing some serious legislation, we have, you know, the advantage in terms of headcount or it's really close and we need to only like get one person to cross the aisle or a couple right now it would be really hard to pass anything meaningful so all right um i don't think we need to do anything else until like the beginning of next year but realistically we're going to the um thanksgiving parade again Realistically, like, I don't even really want my protege to run unless he can run in a different district. Because what district are we in? One? Uh, where's my where's my profile? State. Uh, does it say what state district or city district we're in? I feel like we were in district one. I don't think it really matters, though. So... Office. Let's get to next year. What are we doing? How are we doing on time? We're doing okay. All right. So we will go ahead and jump into 2021. Now, you remember, here is the city law that we passed. It will now go into effect this year. Um, also... This was in the um, budget that there is now going to be a professional learning community uh, set up. So interesting. And so and that was actually no, that was in the, the uh, school board. That was not in our budget or whatever. So anyway, um, that is the only legislation that happened that year and yours truly was responsible for writing said legislation. 
So that's cool. Um, now, if we go to jobs, like there are no job openings available. Why are there none whatsoever? Oh, because um, there's nothing that I can run for right now, apparently. Which, shouldn't there be some spots? Whatever. Like, if I go to my protege, I could say next election. What does this do here? So in the next election, I would say, like, hey, dude, I want you to run for uh, city council in District 2. Actually, let's get one that's, uh, like, a little bit – yeah, let's get one that's really heavy Democratic so that he's really likely to win. Boom. So next election, he's going to run for city council District 6. And that'll get me a puppet, essentially, that if I say this is what legislation we should pass, he will copy my policies and should vote my way. So there you go. Now, in terms of like our position right now, there's just really not a whole lot that we're going to be able to get done as far as these challenges. What we need to do basically is just kind of bide our time. Keep making some cash. Like if we go here to our profile, our personal savings continue to increase. Our campaign funds are going up at a steady clip. Um, and we're doing some things for the party uh, with regard to doing a little bit of fundraising as well. So that's good. But let's just burn through some things here because there's really not going to be much for me to do for a while. We're not going to get any new challenges uh election night what is this primaries oh this is for the, the governorship of virginia and it's just the primary and we don't really care about it so <laughs> um yeah see like being on the city council as you can see not a whole lot going on because there's really just not that much that you can accomplish in a role like that it's basically a stepping stone to a different, um, you know, level of the political ladder. So city council hearing regarding universal background checks. I can't believe we don't have a universal background check in the city. Whatever. We will support this legislation. And I'll bet you, wait. Logan is against gun. The, the, it's just a background check, dude. If you fail a background check when trying to buy a gun, it's probably a good thing that we catch somebody that's in that situation or whatever. Old Jeremiah Moore. I'm no. I'm not surprised that Republicans would oppose this, but um, I'm surprised that the Democrat is was against it so we're going to vote and we are actually going to support this and it won so this was probably logan or whatever the dude's name was uh but that's 60 40 win and that'll go to the mayor to see about establishing um that as law which i kind of wish that we could see that but it's not a big deal actually here legislation news law summary Yeah, so he signed it into law. So there you go. You want to buy a gun in Pittsburgh, you have to pass a background check now. A new challenge. Loosen gun control laws. So that is obviously in response to the um, background check law that just passed. And if I go into legislation, city... Uh, and then go to crime, I think it is. And, okay, so now we go down here, and starting here and going down, these are all of the gun policies that you can potentially influence. There is not a handgun ban. There's not a gun license requirement. There's no ammo limit or uh, license requirement. There's no ammo limit. No self-defense license required. No sporting license required. 
no hunting license required, no handgun ban uh, or limit to how many that you can have, and there's not an assault weapon ban. So the only thing that you have to stay in line with with regard to buying a gun is have a background check. And these people are up in arms that that law passed. And like these are Democratic constituents for the most part that I assume are writing to me, although they don't really say that. Like if I go to challenges, all it says is your constituent, Clark Pratt. It's a constitutional right to own guns. The government should not tolerate any policy that infringes that right. Restore our constitutional right to own guns by eliminating all gun regulations. Like, Clark, I think you need to calm it down, dude. Nobody's saying you can't own a gun. We're just saying we don't want, you know, Looney Tunes with criminal, violent criminal history going and legally purchasing a gun. Not saying that they won't be able to get a gun other ways, but, like, let's not make it to where they can legally do it. I think that's a little bit irresponsible. So, any who's, that's where we're at on that one. And, okay, city budget time. And, again, this is where, like, we're going to try again to do, like, okay, so here if we go to the treasury, um... Right now, it is completely balanced, right? So, where is... Isn't there... Is this just the budget? Because I thought that there was somewhere in here that I could influence property tax, but I guess maybe I needed to do that elsewhere anyway it's not a big deal we're not going to do anything there we're just going to go ahead and let that one go so again in this part of our career run we're not going to get a whole lot done so it's basically uh wait this is the presidential or no oh this is for governor of virginia who's going to win let's just skip to the end Stacy Papadopoulos is now the governor of uh, Virginia. And then Rich Hartley is now the governor of New Jersey. So there you go. All right. Um, oh, I skipped the Thanksgiving Day Parade. Man, whatever. Not a big deal. So now what we want to see here, look here, Governor Quentin Peters will not be seeking re-election. Now, the reality is I am not going to be able to win that position. Um, what I do want to look at here, did this guy run? Or is he running? He'll be running this year, I think. Right? Can I look at... Yeah, election history. He didn't run yet. But he should run, like, this year. for Or whenever the city council seat is up for election, he'll run for it, is what that should come down to. Um, so Governor Quentin Peters is not going to run. And if I go here and go governor, <coughs> and I go right here, He's a Democrat, okay? His approval rating is 63%. I agree with him on a lot of policies. He's in his second term now. Um, so, like, he's got 47,000 political points, guys. I have 134. We are not ready to run for the president, or for the, for the governorship. Now, if I go here to the city level... And I look at old Judd, like Judd's in his third term as mayor, 2,700 points. His approval rating is pretty high. Um, I agree with him on a lot of policies, but he's 69. Like he very well might retire soon. And if he does, we are definitely running for mayor. Even if he doesn't, we might run anyway and just try and maybe outspend him to get that spot. 
We'll see. But it's going to be a tough decision, frankly. So, all right, let's... Um, so, we know that the governorship of Pennsylvania is up for grabs. And the fear here is that a Republican could win. And that would make it really tough at the state level to get anything done. So we probably wouldn't even want to run for like state Senate or state house. All right. So laws from last year in the city, universal preschool and universal background checks are both passed. So in the budget, uh, or actually, no, this is in the, uh, the school board passed this where there is free preschool for everyone. Apparently uh, state laws, prison sentences are now reduced to a half of a year. Uh, so dang it, we probably could have gotten that done at the local level. Uh, in fact, like if I go here and go crime, see, it's still at one year for the city. We should probably go ahead and just write the legislation to drop that down to a half a year now because... That's where it is at the state level. This will get approved, I'm sure. So that'll give us some more political points, which will be nice. Uh, but there's not really a whole lot else that I need to do at the moment. National law, education grants for low-income communities. We have decreased the eligibility to below the poverty level. So that's definitely a Republican initiative there. And then abstinence only sex ed is now passed, which is interesting as well. Um, so there you go. Some new laws that are passed. This one here with the criminal sentences for drug crimes being decreased at the state level is noteworthy because now we just wrote this legislation to get it done at the city level which should be like i don't even know that that's necessarily um like it might be necessary simply simply because like it might be in the city bylaws or something like that i don't know exactly how that works but it seems like if they passed it at the state level of the state you're in it goes into effect at the city level um but whatever so that's the big legislation that we will probably get passed in the year 2022, but that'll do it for this episode. Um, we are now two years into our political career. Um, we're doing okay financially. We haven't really done a lot in terms of legislation, but that stuff will start to pick up the, uh, the more and more that we move up in the um, you know political food chain. So... Uh, if you have not done so already, please be sure to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, comment below, and we will see y'all next time. Good evening, friends and neighbors. Or shall I say this afternoon?